right, so a note about balance, okay? So this is uh, basically your uh, Harbor Freight motorcycle lift. The balance point is right behind the kickstand, this nut. Okay, the first part is you gotta make sure that you're, uh, you position your wheel so that you can access the bolts to remove the uh, uh, front fender here. All right, so we're moving the front fender. You gotta position the wheel. And be mindful, you're gonna crush your fingers on this one. Two short ones and one long one, so you want to make note of which ones those came out of. And then carefully lift it out. Next comes the brake calipers, right? Two rotors, one on each side. Two brake calipers, one on each side. Twelve, two 12 millimeter bolts here is what it takes to get them off. The reflector might be in the way of your socket on a happy ratchet, so you might need to use a 12 millimeter wrench. All right, now this comes off simply just pulling it back, right? Brake pads are still with it. Alright, so what you want to do is you want to take a bungee cord and just hang it out of the way. As soon as I get to the other one, I'm going to go ahead and pull the other one off and I'll be right back with you. Alright, now that the brake calipers are off, next thing to do is uh, remove the axle. So you got to take off this tensioning nut, which is either a 6mm uh, uh, Allen key. Do not remove this completely. Just loosen it. The pièce de résistance. Okay. This is a 19 millimeter Allen nut. All right, which nobody has. Good luck trying to find this at AutoZone or whatever. But a quick pro tip on the forums, which I haven't seen, which I'm fixing to show you, is you take your spark plug socket from your happy home socket set, remove the gasket all right remove the gasket from the inside this is the part that sits on top of the spark plug right on top of the spark plug as you're unscrewing it and then what you do is you take see the bottom of the socket here can you see this is conveniently 19 millimeters what yep so put your Put your uh, extension through the big part and it locks it in there and now you can loosen this of course don't forget lefty loosey righty tighty so let me see if I can do this from here I might have to get a, uh, a cheater pipe on here or a breaker bar it's all the way out there, it goes. And there you go I'm gonna reveal the uh, the fat fork kit here from Lola Nina this is a unicorn one-off they don't uh, they make this for the striker and for the uh, for the bolt but they don't list they don't list it for the uh, for the Raider. So when I asked them, hey, you know, why don't you make these? And they're like, I mean, great guys, uh, but they just feel there isn't a market for them. So uh, it's definitely going to be one off. But what's going to happen here? Alright, nice satin 
angled cut because the tree here is uh, angled. But the turn signal bracket here is straight. So you've got one straight edge and one beveled edge, nicely uh, powder coated. As you can see, I hope it's still in focus. I got these basically on the forums. Um, these are Rancho shock boots, like for four wheel drive trucks. The fork diameter is 46 millimeters, which nobody makes. Even the Harley Breakout has a different size fork diameter, which is actually a little bit larger or smaller or something. Either way, it doesn't fit. But what the plan is, is this will go up top, right, right in between there. And then this will be on the bottom here. I'm going to start with the uh, turn signal bracket. It's mounted on the the bar here, the part of the triple tree. Uh, it's par mounted on the lower one, so I don't have to. I just have to worry about loosening this. So 10 millimeter. All right, so that's loose. And now for the four, this is a uh, six millimeter. Two, three, and four. There it goes. Okay. There you go. Let me get the other one off and I'll be right back. Okay, so it might be better to do this on a bench. But uh, so right fork, left fork, and we got to remove these covers right here so that the gators can fit over the top of them. And hopefully they will fit. Boom. Around. That's not working, so let me backstop this with my happy nut sack. There it goes. And again. And you just work it around till it pops off. And that's it, just this piece right here comes off. Just this one. Okay, let me get the other one off and I'll be right back. Okay, so the good news is that the gator does fit over the bar, but the bad news is that as we go up, the gator gets tighter. Uh, the hardest part is the end right here, trying to get around the uh, 46 millimeters here. So in lieu of getting all fancy and trying to figure out this angle and cut at a diagonal, whatever, whatever, I am literally just gonna cut this level off right here in favor of the wider hole. Just straight across, no, no farting around. Just cut it to the seam there. And then and there's probably a simpler way, maybe even with the razor. But the scissors seems to work okay. Just straight around there. And hopefully it'll look okay. It's not going to be perfect because the triple tree is not flush. The, the, it's at an it's at an angle like this, so there might be some chrome sticking out on the bottom. So we will slide this over. So here's what happened. All right, so I took the shock, or the, the gator, scooched it all the way down, 
And this lip right here is the base or the top of the shock housing right here, right? That's what this is. It, this right here is not floating. And then there's a groove right around here, right? That the zip strip fits in. And of course I put the little the zip strip anchor back three quarters where it shouldn't be seen by most folks, right? And made it tight. The top of the, of the gator is so tight that literally you can see the stain from the triple tree where it would where it would normally be in and literally just position the gator so that it will be angled and you won't see right you won't see the chrome sh shining through so this is this is awesome this is going to be great so we discovered that the measurement for the headlight bracket right here was inaccurate. The measurement at the factory was taken off of an old Raider and the old Raider has those old bullet style turn signals instead of these thin LED types. The bracket on the old bullet style turn signal is an inch and three eighths thick, where this is barely an over an inch, maybe an inch and one sixteenth, an inch and an eighth, something like that. Suffice to say, there's a gap between the top and the bottom, or one or the other, which sucks. <laughs> but it was an inadvertent mistake, I guess. But this was a one-off kind of experiment thing, so it doesn't really bother me too much. But if you do order this from Lo and Me, make sure you specify which turn signal you have. The designer cut it off of his bike they had in the shop. And it was the wrong type of turn signal. All right, I am just finishing up here. What's cool is that it's so, the forks are so large. The gator, once you get it pointed in the upward position here, you can pretty much put it and it will like stay in place. This does not move. <laughs> okay, the, the sleeves are tight. All right, but. Uh, let me get that going. I can just clip it off. And. And there you have it. Right while it's still pretty awesome looking. So now that that's complete, I can go ahead and put the tires back on and wrap it up. Good. Okay, so if you didn't see, all right, you gotta make sure, right, direction arrow. Hopefully you can see this, poor lighting. Whoosh. Direction of travel, all right? Same as when I took it off, okay? <clears throat> so now we go back to our high speed. All right, spark plug socket. with our half inch extension from the inside to 
to tighten this sucker down. Yep, there it comes. All right, or are we just spinning? There we go. Now we got a bite. Yep, yep, yep. All right. That's good for temp right now. All right. I still got to get my torque on. Got to get the torque on here before it's actually safe. All right, and then again, this is just opposite of removal. So after this, calipers, right, and then fender.